Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's. I'm the Reverend Jesse Gutzel Dodson and on behalf of the clergy and staff here, I'd like to welcome you. We're so glad that you've joined us no matter where you are in the world or on your spiritual journey. To participate more fully, I hope that you'll check out the service leaflet in the video description below and also that you'll like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date. If this is one of your first times joining us for worship, please check out our website and there click on the button in the upper right hand corner that says I'm new here. There you can fill out some information and one of the clergy will be in touch with you soon. Today we have a special blessing of welcoming a new assistant rector to our church, the Reverend Brandon Ashcraft. You'll get to hear from him soon and take part in the blessing of his ministry later in the service. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship.
will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the, eternal, of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join me in saying the canticle together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, 
free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Every year at the end of December, I spend a little time reminiscing, looking back over the past year. In my own life, I think about accomplishments and celebrations. I try to honor the challenges and any sadness. In the greater world, I think about the significant events of the year. To be honest, my favorite part is going online to look for some of the great feel-good stories of the year. Heaven knows, given the events of this past year, recalling the goodness that lives on amidst the sadness is healing. In my search this year, I found an article in the New York Times naming the top stories of 2020 in terms of readership. I'm sure you can guess some of the topics of the most read stories of the year, the election, the pandemic, Black Lives Matter. However, one of the stories on this list might surprise you. This story, though published in 2015, continues to be one of the most popular stories each year. The 36 questions that lead to love. The article is based on a study that explores whether intimacy between two strangers can be accelerated by having them ask each other a series of personal questions. The idea is that mutual vulnerability fosters closeness. Here are three of the questions, and I'll give you a moment to think about each one of them. Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? What is the greatest accomplishment of your life? If you are going to be a close friend with someone, what is important for this person to know about you? We will come back to these questions. First, let's take a look at today's gospel, the baptism of our Lord. John the Baptist, clothed in camel's hair, living on locusts and wild honey, draws people from Jerusalem and the surrounding villages out into the wilderness 
to be baptized in the Jordan River. John's baptism is a ritual cleansing, a ceremony for washing away sin. The people come because they recognize that they have sinned and they desire to live a new life. They acknowledge the mistakes they have made, how they have hurt others or even themselves. Perhaps their mistakes stem from pride, greed, envy, anger. They acknowledge that they have turned away from God and that they want to live differently. Having acknowledged both the sin and the desire to change, they are forgiven. They are released from their guilt and offered a new life the opportunity to live as God desires us to live with and for one another. John told the people that while he baptized with, with water, Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. And indeed, the gospel notes that the Holy Spirit was present at Jesus' baptism. As Jesus came up out of the water, the Spirit descended like a dove. The church adopted John's baptism as a way of incorporating new Christians into a life of faith. But the church expanded the ceremony. The rite became more than a spiritual cleansing. We are forgiven, yes, but when we baptize with water and with chrism, the oil which has been consecrated by the bishop, when we baptize with chrism, we say these words, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. In the presence of the Holy Spirit, we enter into a lifelong process of growing into Christ. Perhaps what is most extraordinary about Jesus' baptism is not that the Spirit descended like a dove, but the fact that Jesus chose to be baptized. Through his baptism, Jesus shows us the fullness of his humanity, his complete embodiment of the human condition. As I noted on Christmas Eve, God's might is love. Creation is the outpouring of God's mighty love, the sun, moon, and stars above, the seas below, the mountains and the valleys, plants and animals, every human being. And when all of this wonder was not enough, God's mighty love broke through the barrier, that thin space that is just beyond our vision, that thin space that is just beyond our grasp. God broke through to live as one of us, to show us how to live in this world and to convey to us the eternal nature of love. Jesus was baptized. He humbled himself for love. Now with this great gift of humility in mind, let's look at these questions once again, these questions that lead to love. In the study, the questions are broken up into three sets, and in both the second and third sets, the questions are more probing than the questions in the previous set. So let's listen to and consider these questions. In the light of Jesus living as one of us, in the light of God's love always present among us, always desiring to be known and shared, always desiring to comfort and to inspire our beliefs and actions. From the first set of questions, given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? And from the second set of questions, a little more personal, a little more probing, what is the greatest accomplishment of your life? Finally, from the last set of questions, the most personal, the most probing, if you are going to become a close friend with someone, what is important for this person to know about you?
It makes a difference when we live our lives in the light of Christ. Remember, the idea behind the study that developed these questions is that mutual vulnerability fosters closeness. Consider Jesus' willingness to be vulnerable, to live among us as one of us. Are we willing to be vulnerable with Jesus? In your own words, in your most authentic self, what do you want Jesus to know about you? This question is one that we might ask ourselves throughout our lives. Through our baptism in the presence of the Holy Spirit, we enter into a lifelong process of growing into Christ. The closing prayer in the rite of baptism reminds us of the gifts of our journey with Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon us, your servants, the forgiveness of sin and have raised us to new life of grace. Sustain us, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give us an inquiring and discerning heart. The courage to will and to persevere. A spirit to know and to love you. And the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. On this feast of the baptism of our Lord, let us renew the covenant we made in our baptism. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and of the prayers, I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim, by word and example, the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself, I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we celebrate a new blessing as we welcome the Reverend Brandon Ashcraft as our Assistant Rector. We begin this journey with intention, with community, and with prayer. Let us pray. God of all new beginnings, we ask for your presence and blessing among us as we welcome Brandon into our congregation. Thank you for raising up among us faithful servants of your word and sacraments. We pray for Brandon, that he may carry out his ministry among us with faithfulness and joy. We pray that he thrives here in his new role as he leads us in worship, outreach, and pastoral care. Brandon, do you, in presence of the faithful gathered here virtually, commit yourself to this new role and to this congregation? I, Brandon, commit myself to you, the people of St. Paul's, as your priest and pastor, bringing my strengths and weaknesses, my hopes and concerns, my gifts and talents bestowed on me by God's grace, and will endeavor, with the help of God, to share with you in the ministry of this parish, in the name of Christ, with the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Since we cannot be physically together to pray with you, I'll address the next question to our senior warden, Liz Patterson, who will speak on behalf of the congregation. Do you, the people of St. Paul's, commit yourselves to share in ministry with Brandon? We, the people of St. Paul's, commit ourselves to you as one of our priests and pastors, bringing our strengths and weaknesses, our hopes and concerns, our gifts and talents bestowed on us by God's grace, and will endeavor with the help of God to share with you in the ministry of this parish. In the name of Christ, with the empowering of the Holy Spirit. May God bless our ministry in the years to come. Grant that we who serve here together will always rejoice in God's glory through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark, Arthur, and Bill, our bishops, for Jeannie, Jesse, and Brandon, our priests, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick and the hungry, the oppressed and those in prison. Pray for those in need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. God of ages, in your sight nations rise and fall and pass through times of peril. Now, when our land is troubled, be near to judge and to save. May leaders be led by your wisdom. May they search for your will and see it clearly. In any ways we have turned from your way, help us to reverse them. Give us your light and your truth to guide us, through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of this world and our Savior. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. 
And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Oh.